Life before April. Um, didn't have much of a care in the world. Just your typical college guy. Simpler times. Life before Cody was around was a lot more simple. And it was rounders in downtown Mankato. Just hanging out with my friends and uh, just, I don't know, cracking jokes with them probably. And next thing I know, this bubbly little blonde girl is just in my face. Going over to talk to this guy was kind of out of my comfort zone, but I didn't let him know it. And I went up to him right away and was like, I don't know you, but you need my phone number. And we need to talk. I, I just, we need to, we need to be friends. And I was like, okay, who are you? I don't know you. And she starts to introduce herself to me and she goes, hi, I'm April. And I say, hey, April, I'm March. And of course she had never heard anything that funny before in her life. Then I probably wasn't the nicest that I could have been to her, but for some reason she kept coming back and trying to make conversation with me. And I think we all know why this thing right here. And I took his phone from his hands and I typed my number in it and apparently he didn't like that. Even went a classy route and tracked me down on Facebook and aggressive is how I would describe April's approach to me. Um, something that I'd never had before. She was drawn to me and that persistence uh, helped draw me back into her. When we first started dating, it kind of seemed like April was the girl that was just always there. Um, whether invited or not, she'd just find a way to show up. And at first, you know, it wasn't really that, I wasn't used to it. You know, I may not have always welcomed it, but after a while, she kind of grew on me like a leech per se. The thing I like most about Cody is that he is very, strong and I mean that not physically no offense babe but I mean it emotionally he is strong in the areas in which I'm weak he is awesome I mean he has been through so many things with me and will literally I mean he knows the right word maybe it can be just sherbert and it'll literally make my day and it's awesome because I mean like I said he can take me from one mood to the next pretty easily and I just, I just love that about him I knew it became serious when it was my birthday shortly after we had been dating um, and she had gotten me a gift. She completely surprised me. I didn't expect it. And I opened it up and inside of it is a Minnesota Gopher wrestling singlet. And I just never had someone completely understand me like that before. I knew it was becoming serious when Cody would finally meet my family. He was terrified to meet my family, and to me that's just hilarious because I have the best family in the world. But when he finally wanted to meet my family on St. Patrick's Day, I knew, oh my gosh, we're taking a step down the right road. Our first kiss um, happened when we were completely sober, I swear. Am I supposed to raise my right hand? She made the first move, I will gladly admit it. And it was passionate. I don't really know. It was, it was a pretty passionate kiss, I guess. That's what he says. When we began to talk seriously about marriage, um, I'd always told her that I didn't want to get married. Um, so I just had her very frustrated. She would talk to friends, to family. Cody doesn't want to get married. He wants to wait five years. He wants to wait till I'm done with college. He is so good at mind games. And it kind of got annoying. She was just constantly complaining about how I didn't want to marry her. My plan? to propose to April um, began for one Christmas present. I gave her a gift and I just hyped it up super big. And I was like, this is gonna be the best gift of all. Um, I got a cross necklace and she collects cross necklaces. So it was something that kind of played into one of her interests. And on that necklace, I attached a key. And she opened the necklace and looked at it and was like, cool because like I said I had given it a lot of hype and with the explanation of it I just said keep this key on you at all times you never know when you'll need it. The proposal from my perspective was I had no idea that this was coming but all I knew was I needed to have a lot of energy because he said we had to stay up late and that I was going to need to have an empty stomach because he made an awesome meal. So I came home and 
He wouldn't even let me in the doorway, which I thought was pretty rude. I hadn't seen him in about two weeks. And he puts a blindfold on me and I'm like, well, welcome home to you too. And takes me into this room and tells me I have to have this childlike imagination, which is pretty easy for an elementary teacher, and that I needed to have a good mood. I'm always in a good mood, so I don't know why he would tell me that I had to be in a good mood. So it was New Year's Eve, and I kind of had three different portions of the night planned. Um, we were going to go to a dance club, have a dinner, and go to a movie. Um, and after all of those were completed, I pulled out a, a big present into the center of our room, and inside of each box was another box and another box, a few gag gifts along the way, and um, even uh, two 20-pound dumbbells. And I don't think April had much interest in working out on New Year's Eve, but I figured I'd give her the option. He, this little stinker, had this huge Christmas present sitting on the middle of the floor. And I was so excited. He would say mad. He would probably say that I threw a temper tantrum, but I didn't. I was so excited that we had these gifts for each other, except I'd forgotten mine at the store. Or uh, actually, I'd returned mine because we weren't getting them for each other. But that's besides the point. Actually, what the point was that I had all these gifts to open, and they weren't ending, and they were really heavy, and I couldn't figure out what I needed so bad that was this heavy. And then I realized there's something going on here. Kept moving, kept lifting things, and got to the last box, and I was really tired. And then I realized that there's dumbbells in them. And so I kind of looked at them and was like, is this a fat joke? With the inside the chest box was the last box and April had pulled from her neck um, the key that I'd given her a year prior. It's a treasure chest box, and it has a little lock on it, and so I instantly took the key off my necklace that I'd been wearing for almost a year, and I unlocked the box, and I saw the Zales box, and I just kind of looked at him, and... And I got down on one knee, and April only had one thing to say, and that was yes. But the only thing she could come up with is, is this real? Is this really happening right now? Is this real? And with the key, she opened the box and opened our love together, and we began our life together that night. And the rest is history. I think we're going to make it because I love me and she loves me too, so that's all we need. The thing that I like most about April um, is the way that she stands by me and her personality with everyone, and she's just very welcoming. It, he's the strength where I'm weak, picks me up when I'm down, he brings me from one mood to the other, and he's always there for me through it all. And I just absolutely love and adore that about him.